Welcome my viewers to the magic behind the channel. This is the channel where we show you magic of electronics. We teach you about electronics components and how to use those components to make working circuits. You can make these circuits either for business, for fun, or for school projects. In today's video, I want to show you how to make seven channels LED chaser the one which is chasing you in front of you. Before we continue, I want to show you the materials, tools, and components I've used to complete this circuit. In front of you, you can see some materials, components, and tools which you need to complete this circuit. I want to explain to you briefly what they are. Number one, you'll need LEDs, right emitting diodes, this one. These are the one which grows or gives out light when they are connected to power. You'll need resistors, three in number. Two of them, two of them are one ohm each, one ohm each. And the other one is 10K ohm. You will need one mega ohm variable resistor. You will need a blank PCB, the one which is brown. You will need, according to the size and the components, you need to insert on it. You will need IC holders. The bigger holder is for IC number 4017, and the smaller one is for IC number 345. You also need ICs themselves. The bigger one is IC number 4017, and the smaller one is IC number 345. You will need electrolytic capacitor. The one I'm using is 470 microfarads. At five volts. You'll also need a ceramic capacitor. The one I'm using is 684 joules, 400 volts. You'll need a solder, jumper wires, you'll need a screwdriver. You need a plywood according to the size and the number of LEDs which you have. You need a nail cutter. You need a soldering iron. And you'll also need a drill, a mini drill. I'll explain to you later what it's worth is. The work of the drill is to make holes on the plywood so that you'll be able to insert the LED. You can see I've made those holes. You take your LEDs. Insert that way. Then at the back, you come and fold the leaves. You solder them. After soldering, you will realize that you'll be remaining with extending leads or legs which are unnecessary. That's where the work of the nail cutter comes in. You need to trim those 
wrong and necessary leads using the meal cutter. After you have soldered, you are now left with a positive lead and the negative lead. Technically, we call it anode and cathode. Let me now show you the work of the screwdriver. The one I'm using is flat head. It has a flat head. Its work is to tune the variable resistor so that you can increase the speed of the writing or slow it down. The variable resistor has a slot where the head of the screwdriver will get in. Then you tune the variable resistor either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Let us start with clockwise. As you can see, the sequence or the speed of the writing has slowed down. Let us tune the other side and clockwise. As you can see, the speed has increased. That's the work of the screwdriver. Now, the other thing is that uh, my circuit, this one, is not using a battery. I'm getting power from the main AC. This is a power cable coming from the main AC all the way to my circuit. What I've done is that I've converted the C to DC through a circuit known as AC to DC inverter. This one here. I'll make a video later to explain to you how to make one. I now want to use my soldering iron to desolder the wires and the other connections so that I separate the two circuits, this circuit and this other one so that I may be able to explain to you one by one. I am now holding the chaser circuit and I'm holding it on the upright way. As you can see, these are all the components I've shown you there earlier. This is one ohm resistor, the other one ohm resistor. This is the electrolytic capacitor, the IC number 4017 sitting on its IC holder, IC number 555 sitting on its IC holder. This is the 10K resistor, variable resistor, and the ceramic capacitor. Before I go to the rear side, because that's where all the connections are, I want to show you something which is very, very important. And that is how to count IC pins. Because the output signal going to the LEDs will be coming from the bigger IC and also we have connections between the bigger IC and the small one you need to know the number of the pins or of those ICs and uh, when counting IC pins you are supposed to count them and clockwise that is starting from the left side when holding it upright facing you coming 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 down and up again that means this pin number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen the same case with the smaller ic pin number one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight. That is how to count I see things. You'll be guided by this notch. As you can see, there is a notch on this I see. There is a notch here. And also, there is a notch on the smaller I see. The same case on the IC holder. There is a notch here. And also, there is a notch also on the smaller IC holder. The notch on the IC holder and the notch on the IC itself should be on the same side. So do not make a mistake of putting the notch down, whereas the notch on the holder is on the upper side. The other thing I want to let you know is that the most vulnerable component here to get burnt or to get spoiled is the IC. And the reason why I prefer using the IC holder is because when the IC gets spoiled, it will be very easier for me to use the screw driver to come and remove I remove the IC, you need to do it very gently. And then you come to the lower side, then you remove your IC. The same way or the same case with the smaller one. When you get a new one, you need to just come in and press it back that way. But in case you don't find the IC holder. You can still solder the, the solder, the IC itself on the board. But when it gets spoiled, you need to remove or throw away the whole board. You get to make a fresh one. Because it should be very difficult for you to remove, to desolder the IC from the board and, uh, and then put a new one. It will have spoiled almost everything. Now I want us to get to the back side or to the rear side and what you need to do is that uh, when holding this uh, circuit board on the uh, upright side, you need to tilt it and also make sure the upright side when it was facing you remains the upright side. That's how I've done my connections. You need to realize that when you come to the back side, the pin numbering has changed direction. That means on this bigger IC, the pin number one is this. So when counting, now you will count clockwise. This pin number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. The same case with the smaller IC. Now, because the signal to go to the LEDs is coming from the bigger, from the bigger IC, I have pulled that signal from the pin up to the end of this board. This is to make it easier for me to connect now from here to the LEDs. You can as well get a wire from here to the LEDs, but for me, I have preferred to pull it up to the end of the board to these points here, so that it'll be, it will be easier for me to connect to the LEDs. Let me repeat that when you are working on the board from the rear side. Make sure before you tilt to the back side, you are holding your board on the upright side. Then you tilt it, and you will re realize that the direction of the pins, the numbering has changed. So when counting the IC pins from the rear side, you will count them clockwise. When you note this, it will be easier for you to do the connections. I will 
give you a diagram at the end of this video and when you follow the diagram you'll be able to make all the connections and the circuit should work now i want to put this down i show you the other circuit of the leds this is the other circuit where i have inserted my leds as you can see each of my channel has 15 LEDs. You can increase them in number or reduce them according to the way you wish. All these terminals on this lower side, all these are positive terminals. Or this is the anode of the LED. The upper side we have cathode. Or the negative lead. Then we come to the back side. As I've told you, this is the positive, or these are the positives. Then on the upper side, these are the negatives. As you can see, I have connected or joined all the negatives. This is because the negative signal has only one terminal, which I'm getting through this black wire. But for every positive, uh, for the positives, positive signal, each channel has an individual wire. That's why on this, we have seven terminals. That's where the white wires are coming here. Then the negative common terminal is getting its signal from here. That's how my circuits look like. I now want to solder the wires back. We do the testing, we see whether our circuit is still working. When soldering the white wires, I won't use any order. I'll solder them just randomly. But if you want to change the LEDs following each other, you are supposed to first put the circuit on. You know which channel is writing first, which is second. Then you come and mark on this on this board you mark number one number two number three after that you solder them according to how you have marked and when you put power they will chase for each other i've soldered back we put it to power, we see whether it's still working. circuit is okay it's working and I want to thank you so much for watching my video please make sure you give it a thumbs up share it with your, with your friends who you think may be interested on the comment section below ask me any question in regards to this video and also very important please click the subscribe button below this video if you have not yet done so by subscribing to this channel you'll be supporting me and you'll be supporting this channel in my next video i'll be explaining the diagram of this circuit 
and I explain to you where you should start, what should come first, and the way you will add connecting. Uh, as I have promised, I will give you a diagram in a second. I'll attach it at the end of the video. As I promised you, in front of you is the circuit diagram for the seven channels and in this instance. If you follow it the way I've drawn it and make the correct connections, you'll be able to have a working circuit. Once again, thank you so much. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking the red subscribe button below this video and also click on the bell icon so that every time I upload a new video, you will automatically be notified. In my next channel, or rather in my next video, I'll explain this diagram. I show you where you should start, how you should go to the next step up to the time you will complete the whole circuit. Thank you. See you in the next video.